You know, I've been a fan of the WWE, WWF, if you will, for almost 30 years now. Almost 30 years. And I've been a fan of wrestling for just that long as well. And I've lived through and I have witnessed, like a lot of people, I've witnessed the Hogan era as best as I could, you know, being the age I was, you know, six, seven, eight years old. You know, I pay, tried to pay attention to it as best I could. I paid attention to the times of the AWA when it was on ESPN because it intrigued me. I paid attention throughout the entire 90s as best as I could. And even into the 2000s, and even now, 2013. And you would think the WWE, after all this time, would be clued in as to what the fans want. You think the WWE, Vince McMahon, and his daughter, who I'm a fan of, Stephanie McMahon, you think they would be clued in to what fans want. Every error, every error of wrestling, from the Federation error, to the New Generation error, to the Attitude error, to the r Ruthless Aggression error, to now the current PG WWE Universe error, you think throughout all those errors from Federation, New Generation, attitude, ruthless aggression, and now the current PG WWE Universe error, you think they would be clued in as to what fans really want. Now I said a couple weeks ago when this match was announced, the unification match between John Cena and Randy Orton, when I did an audio video on why this is happening, First and, first and foremost, I stay true to what I said there. This is nothing more than a publicity stunt to get people to tune into the product. Because they know a lot of WWE and overall wrestling fans have been waiting for the day that both the World Heavyweight Championship and the WWE Championship would finally, once again, be unified into one. And they know that if they say, hey, we're going to unify the belts at TLC, our last pay-per-view of the year, it's going to grab people's attention. It's going to get people to tune in, whether people want to admit it or not. It's going to get them to shelve out that 45 to 55 sometimes $65 onto the cable or, sa cable or satellite bill. It's going to cause them to shelve that out. And why, you might ask? Because it's all about publicity. It's all about, hey, we're going to unify the belt, so you have to watch the product. And even though fans have already speculated on various ways that match is going to end between John Cena and Randy Orton at TLC this Sunday, WWE is still determined to come out and say, hey, we're going to have one champion. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And yet you have the solicits, the solicits, if you will, the advertising solicits for the Royal Rumble next year. You have those solicits, those descriptions telling people that they're going to have a WWE and world champion at this event. And the same with the Elimination Chamber. So you're telling me the WWE expects us to believe, without a shadow of a doubt, we're going to have one unified champion after Sunday? Well, hopefully WWE lives up to its word and gives us a unified champion. But that's not... That's not that's not all. That's not just it. You see, this past Monday night, which was the first time I had missed watching the Slammy Awards, but I am going to torrent it. I am going to find a torrent and download it. 
you know, from what I understand, the Slammy Awards were emanating Raw slash sla Monday Night Raw slash Slammy Awards. were emanating, emanating, if you will, from Seattle, Washington. Uh, Seattle, Washington. And apparently it was acknowledged that Seattle's not that far from the home, it's not that far away from the home of a certain WWE superstar that is more over than your current franchise players in Randy Orton and John Cena. And of course, I'm talking about Daniel Bryan, who you see right there on the screen. And that throughout the night, throughout the night, you have people chanting, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan. You have people chanting, yes, yes, yes. And then, during your final main event segment, which is the champion ascension ceremony, where you have 20 former champions, which includes Daniel Bryan and the second most over guy in the company beside him being CM Punk. You have them there, and you're trying to hype up with those two being in among with those two being among the 20 other champions, 20 other former champions, you have them there Well, you're trying to hype up Randy Orton, John Cena for the Unified Championship at TLC, and yet, and yet, you have the crowd, as many reports have put it, hijacking that segment by chanting Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan. I apologize, that's a street sweep, street cleaner in the background. But you have the crowd chanting Daniel Bryan. Basically, as reports at numerous sites have said, hijacking that segment. I mean, even when it broke into all chaos, if you will, and Stephanie McMahon gets knocked down, you have them still chanting Daniel Bryan. Now, according to what Jeff Shegel said, the Schleg Daddy at OTRS Central, Off the Rope Show Central, he basically said that they may have started to plant the seeds for WrestleMania. May have started to plant the seeds for CM Punk, Triple H, Daniel Bryan, HBK, or just the fact of, or possibly just Daniel Bryan, CM Punk versus D-Generation X. And you know what? That's fine. You want to plant the seeds there, right then and there? Fine. But last night was just an example, as Jeff Shegel put it, and everybody else has put it. Not just here on YouTube in the YWC, not but all over the internet, all over the IWC. And I'm not just talking fans. I'm talking reporters, insiders, people that have worked within the WWE and know how the inner workings go. Even they have said that WWE is out of touch. The WWE needs to wake up and see what's right in front of them and realize that their gold mine, their gold mine, ladies and gentlemen, is staring them right in the face, beard and all, straight edge and all, it's staring them right in the face and they don't want to acknowledge it. And you know why? It's because Vince McMahon, whether you want to admit it or not, doesn't want to promote, doesn't want to push a guy that was the basically the franchise player and face of a rival promotion. That's why Vince McMahon does not want to push Daniel Bryan. That's why Vince McMahon has slowed down a little bit on CM Punk's push. 
They don't want to push either of them to the WWE Championship because they were both the face and franchise players of Ring of Honor. That's right. R-O-H is the reason Daniel Bryan is not being pushed right now because he was the franchise player in the face of Ring of Honor. Same with CM Punk. The reason they slowed down his push to the top Again, to being WWE champion, because he was associated with Ring of Honor. I mean, when you think about it, when you think about it, CM Punk should have always been in the main event, the last match of the night when he was WWE champion. Am I right? Now you might say, well, what? Well, now you might say WrestleMania 28 is the exception. Okay, 28 is the exception. WrestleMania 28 is the exception. But every now and then, he should have been in the last match of the night, or at least one of the last two. And why, and why wasn't he? Why was he only put into the main event with the likes of The Rock and even John Cena? It's because he was not, it wasn't because he was the WWE champion. No, it's because he, like Daniel Bryan, was the face of Ring of Honor, was a franchise player of Ring of Honor that put ROH on the map, and Vince McMahon doesn't like it. It's basically in Vince McMahon's eyes, if you're not a creation or if you're not willing to accept the new identity, the new look, the new gimmick that WWE is going to give you, you are not going to be pushed to the top. Even if you are a WWE champion, we'll elevate the world title above you. Or we'll elevate somebody else above you. Even if they're not wrestling for a title, we'll elevate them above you. So yeah, that's basically why CM Punk, during his 434 days as champion, for a majority of that reign, was defending either at the beginning or the middle of the card. All due to the fact that he was a product and he was the face and franchise of Ring of Honor. Same with Daniel Bryan. That is why. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, Bryan. CM Punk was able to put Ring of Honor and ID, IWA footage on, on, the, uh, on his uh, Best in the World DVD. Yeah, he was. Because he had something to do with the DVD. He had a lot of input into the DVD, unlike some of the other biographies we see. He had more input in it. He was like Bret Hart. Bret Hart had input into his biography DVD. CM Punk had the same thing. The point is, the reason Dan in my opinion, the reason Daniel Bryan is not being pushed the way he should be and not being given that golden ring and given the ball and just run with it is because he was the face and franchise of Ring of Honor and Vince McMahon, if you've not been paying attention to your history, does not ever, and if he does, rarely ever allow anybody, allow anybody to be the top guy or be his top champion. Very rarely does he allow that to happen. And even if he does let somebody that was the face and franchise of another company be the top guy, be the top champion, he doesn't place them in a high archy position. He doesn't place them in the main event. You want truth? Here's truth. When Rob Van Dam won the, e the WWE Championship at One Night Stand, at ECW One Night Stand 2006, true, he won it in the main event because he won it from John Cena. It's like if you're not feuding with one of Vince McMahon's guys, you're not going to be in the main event. Oh, and guess what? When Rob Van Dam defended that championship on a paper, the following pay-per-view, which was Vengeance, what position of the match was he in? What position was he in? I'll tell you what he was in. From what I understand, he was not even in the main event. I could be wrong, but he wasn't the last match of the night. That's the philosophy. 
Basically, if Vince McMahon feels like it and he says, okay, I'm going to let you be WWE champion, but I'm not going to let you defend the championship in the main event unless it's against one of my guys, you're not going to be nothing more than a mid-card WWE world champion. That's all you're ever going to be. That's why some people, even though the IWC and the YWC were happy with the lengthy reign of CM Punk as WWE champion, it's also the reason they were never happy with the fact that he was always at the be defending the title at the beginning or in the middle of the card. All because of the fact that Vince McMahon didn't view him as one of his guys because he was already the face and franchise of Ring of Honor. Think about Booker T. Now you might say, oh, well, that's a racial situation. Booker T, Booker T, if you will, was never really put into the last match, the last main event, if you will, when he was World Heavyweight Champion, unless it was with some top guys like John Cena, Big Show, Randy Orton, Des Batista. It didn't matter. Booker T was always in the middle of the card. Especially if it was a unified show. Especially if it was a unified show. He was always in the middle of the card. The thing is, unless you're a product of Vince McMahon, unless you allow Vince McMahon to mold you in his image, give you a gimmick that he feels is going to get you over, and thus make you one of his originals or one of his own creations, you're not going to get over. You're not going to be a top guy. Take a look at Chris Jericho. You might say, well, Chris Jericho is the exception. Chris Jericho didn't have nothing really going for him in WCW. He didn't really have nothing going for him, even though he should have been pushed to the top. So what did they do instead? What did they do instead? I'll tell you what they did. I'll tell you what they did. So what did they do instead? When Chris Jericho's contract came up, he came into WWE, what did he do? He allowed them to mold them in his image, in their image. Vince McMahon was allowed to mold Chris Jericho into what he wanted him to be. He molded him into Y2J. He molded him into the Raw's Jericho deal. He molded him into the Chris Jericho we now know. So unless CM Punk was more, so basically it's like if Daniel Bryan and CM Punk were like, okay, Vince McMahon, go ahead and mold us. What do you want us to be? Only that way, if they would have allowed that, that would be the only way they'd ever get over. That'd be the only way they'd be the WWE champion right now. That'd be the only way they'd be in the main event every single pay-per-view, every single Monday Night Raw defending the championship, is if they allowed Vince McMahon to mold them, but they didn't. But they didn't. And another thing, too. And another thing, too. They already had established fan bases coming into WWE. They did. They already had established fan bases coming into that company. And that is what irked Vince McMahon and the WWE more than anything. It irked them due to the fact that these guys were already well known by the wrestling fans that were fans of WWE. And the, the fans that and the fans of Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, if you will, CM Punk. Even those, that the, even those that were just fans of them, fans of Ring of Honor, and fans of indie wrestling, followed them to WWE because of who they were and because now they were part of the biggest wrestling promotion in the world. That is why, that is why these guys will put, that is why these guys are so over and that is why legit storyline, backstage or whatever, fans are not, not fans, but Vince McMahon and Triple H, mostly Vince McMahon, are not too happy with how over these guys are. It's because pretty much the WWE Universe, the wrestling universe, the IWC, the YWC, the FWC, Facebook wrestling community, this is why the rebelling against them. And this is why you had what you did last night 
I mean, two nights ago. This is, what you, this is why you had what you had two nights ago during the championship ascension ceremony and throughout all of Monday Night Raw. This is why you had the chance that you did at the, during the Survivor Series main event. This is why no matter where you go for a pay-per-view or a Raw, that those fans, those smart mark fans, if you will, of the IWC, the YWC, and the FWC, Facebook wrestling community, and the TWC, Twitter wrestling community, and maybe even the GWC, Google wrestling community, this is why they keep constantly rebelling against the WWE. It's because they're trying to get the message across that, look, the days of Cena versus Orton, the days of Triple H versus Cena, the days of Triple H versus Orton, the days of Big Show versus Orton, Big Show versus Cena. These days are over. It's time for a change. It's time for a revolution. It's time for a rebellion. It's time for change. It's time for you, the WWE, to wake up and realize that what's in front of you is an absolute gold mine. But again, the reason it's not happening, ladies and gentlemen, the reason Daniel Bryan, as over as the guy is, and the reason CM Punk, as over as he is, are not being put where they should be, the reason CM Punk's push has simmered down a little bit, the reason Daniel Bryan's in the position that he is in right now, it's all due to the fact that Vince McMahon disdains disdains, dislikes, hates the fact that these two were the face and franchise of one of his rival, com rival competitors, one of his rival, comp his rival competition, his, one of his competitors, as small as it is though, he disdains, he hates, he dislikes the fact that these two were the face and franchise players of Ring of Honor. That's why you don't see them at the top. Because they were not a product of the WWE. They were a product of Ring of Honor. And again, if history has not shown you, has not shown you right off the bat, then unless you allow Vince McMahon and the WWE to mold you in their image, give you a look and a gimmick that they believe it's going to be a money maker. It's going to get them get that get you over with the crowd. If you come in already established as somebody that's already made a name for themselves in another promotion, even if you become champion, world champion, or WWE champion, you're never going to be in the main event. You're never going to be in the last match of the night. You're never going to be pushed to the top. Reality is, whether anybody wants to admit it or not. Vince McMahon may like these guys. He may like the fan base they bring. He may like the merchandise. He may like the money that the merchandise makes for him. But he doesn't like the fact that they were the face and the franchises, the faces and the franchise players of one of his competitors, of one of his rival competitors in Ring of Honor. That's why. And you might say, well, Ring of Honor is small. Doesn't matter to Vince McMahon, whether you're small, medium sized, or whatever. If as long as you're nationally known or worldwide known, as long as you're known on a national or worldwide basis, he still looks at you as competition. He still looks at you as small or medium sized as you are, as big as you are. It doesn't matter what size your company is. He still looks at you as competition, and he still looks at you as a threat. And he knows, and he, and this is my opinion, he knows that if he was to, this is, because this is what he's afraid of. He knows, this is what he's afraid of, in my opinion. He's afraid that if he pushes Daniel Bryan and CM Punk to the top, gives him the WWE Championship for as long as, like CM Punk had, constantly puts him in the last match of the night defending that belt. What he's afraid of, and this is, to me, this is the dumbest reason, in my opinion, what he's afraid of is it's going to give attention to Ring of Honor, because people are going to look up exactly where Daniel Bryan and CM Punk came from. They're going to see that they came from this Ring of Honor promotion if they've never heard of Ring of Honor. And they're going to look up Ring of Honor, and they're going to want to see exactly 
what it's about. They're going to want to see what Ring of Honor is about. Why these two are so proud for coming from coming from there, or being, or why these two are so proud and always happy to mention that they were glad they came from Ring of Honor. The fact is, folks. The fact is, if you're not a product of Vince McMahon, if you, even if you come from another competitor. If you don't allow him to mold you in his image, if you don't allow him to give you a look and a gimmick that he feels is going to make money and is going to have the WWE Universe embrace you with open arms, and you just come in already established with your own fan base, with your own credentials and all that, you ain't going to go anywhere. You may have your name changed around like Daniel Bryan did, but you still ain't going to go anywhere. And that's a fact. That is a flat out fact, in my opinion. So if you want to know why Daniel Bryan, why WWE is trying to go against the grain, why Daniel Bryan, why WWE is not pushing Daniel Bryan, is why Daniel Bryan's not in the TLC main event, or why he's not champion right now, there's your answer. Let me know what you guys think down below. Comment if you like. I'll talk to you all later.